Thank you so much for coming here today. It's so great to see you. It is so great that uh, even in this dreadful weather, I just came from Iceland. I can, I can, I can tell you the weather there was better than here. <laughs> so come to Iceland if you want a sunny day and a nice little spring. But I mean, this is a serious occasion. Tomorrow, it will have been five years that Julian has spent in Belmar's prison. Five years too many. It is absolutely amazing to think and incredible in my mind that it's been five years since I was sitting in a last minute meeting before heading out to my planned uh, departure from London to Reykjavik, my home city. I was sitting with Stella when we got the phone call and heard about this uh, event in the Ecuadorian embassy where Julian was dragged out. It is absolutely horrible to think back to that day and uh, that, the that the Ecuadorians would take this unprecedented step to allow the police into their sovereign grounds, into the embassy to arrest Julian there after having given him citizenship after have, having promised him asylum. I do not, cannot fathom anything more shameful than that. It goes against any grain of, of what you expect from people. It is so shameful that uh, I do not have strong enough words to express my disdain for that. But this is also something that was setting the scene for future happenings. This was unprecedented because the sanctuary of, of, of asylum, the sanctuary of embassies was holy until that day. But what has happened since only a few days ago in Ecuador, a former vice president of the country who has been granted asylum in the Mexican embassy was arrested there. So the, the, the example has been set, and there are so many cases like that in the case of Julian Assange, where the attack against him has set the tone. And growing and gradually, we see more and more attack on the international order, the international system. Who would have thought that the greatest nations in our surrounding would totally disregard the findings of the United Nations. Both the Working Group on Arbor Detention, a very important human rights body that had been responsible for free political dissidents who were in trouble in countries that we call less democratic than our own. Who would have thought that the letters from the Special Rapporteur on Torture at the United Nations were not answered and disregarded when he sent it to the Swedish government, to the UK government, to the American government. But what did it mark? What have we seen since? We've seen a total disregard of the United Nations bodies. Even the international courts are being disregarded and shunned. So we see a breakdown of, of, of international orders in so many fields. But this needs to end. This needs to come to an end. And there is growing awareness that enough is enough. And I paraphrase the word of Anthony Albanese, the Prime Minister of Australia, but he said it, I think, one and a half year ago. If it was true then, it certainly is true now. Yes. It is a case a persecution against an individual that should never have been started. Never have been started. And they, he has been persecuted through the process now in the courtroom, the sham courtrooms here, where they pretend to be practicing justice. But because of the resistance from Julian's lawyers, they've had to come up with writings and logic, which is something that you would expect to read in a revised chapter 
of Alice in Wonderland. It's no logic at all. They've tied themselves in a knot. But we must cling to the hope that this will end someday, and that day has to come soon. We should put additional pressure on the Australian government. Yes, we are grateful that there was a change of heart, change of political leadership, and finally the Australian government remembered that they had a citizen who was fighting for justice and fighting for press freedom, and they came on board. But there should be more pressure, and they, they should be urged to put more pressure on the demand for the freedom of Julian Assange. I will tell the Australian government, do not stop at anything. Make a total demand to the United States government. They do need the Australians. They need them for you know what. Yeah. It's, yeah, we all know. Yeah. It is trade and defense, as it is called. Yeah. But make it, I will appeal to the Australian government. We're not going to have any discussions about those things unless and until you free Julian Assange. Yeah. Then we can talk about submarines and trade and whatever. It should be the one thing that they would put on the table. Free Julian Assange. Free Julian Assange! Let me add this. This, is a, this has been such a long struggle. The positive thing is that I'm meeting people like you. It's because people like you coming out and keeping this issue alive, keeping the, 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 the pressure going, demanding that politicians and the media take a stand on the issue because it's for them, and I'm referring to journalists here. It's because of you that this has, that this has been growing steadily, the support of Julian and the demand for his freedom. So I'm grateful for your campaign. And let's remember, the day will come when we can all celebrate the freedom of Julian Assange. And it will be so important day. It will be a day that will mark, I hope, a turnaround. It will be, a, of course, a day of freedom for an individual who can join his family, be with his sons, be with Stella. But also, it will mark, I will hope, the beginning of the turnaround in the fight against those evil powers. And this is the fight that you've been fighting. And the day of celebration will come. Until then, let's keep on fighting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's free Julian. Yeah.